Mrs. Jaisilan to start with hers. Uh, this is just about five, seven minutes, not too long. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, I just want to say something. I'm no longer in a job that talks about transport. But transport has become very dear to me, uh, especially after I handled the rapid rail transport system in the NCR. Uh, and I was so passionate about it that we managed to get cabinet approval for this largest infrastructure interstate project. We got the cabinet approval. I'm no longer in that job. But what gives me great satisfaction is that the project is not being discarded and the project is on track and is on grid. I would just give an overview and, and exactly tell you that what are the points which made me think after I did the course. I did the five day, four day course in Dubai. So I, I learned a lot and I'll, I'll give you exactly the points at which my thinking about the project changed. Uh, as you know, uh, this is just by way of introduction, the NCR has a population of 5.68 crores, a huge population. It's more urbanized than the most urbanized state in India, which is Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu's urbanization is about 42%. The NCR is 62% urbanized. We have 23 districts. We add 22 districts and one Delhi, so we have 23. And it has a huge area of 53 square kilometers. This is just by the dimensions of the, of, of the area in which you are working. Uh, there was an integrated transport plan prepared for the NCR, and as you can see, 30% of the traffic that goes between Delhi is actually non-destined traffic. And there's a substantial traffic which goes from Delhi to the NCR, and a substantial traffic which goes comes from the NCR to Delhi. So there's this huge uh, entity, a transport entity, which was earlier probably never taken into account because of interstate issues. Yeah. Now, this is the point at which I think the course really helped me. Is that, you know, the, we, conventionally we are taught, taught that you have to increase your road network density. And NCR has the, one of the highest road densities in the country. Yet, majority of the existing network has experienced high congestion. 80% of the roads have a BC ratio, volume by BCing ratio of greater than 0.7, which is supposed to be an ideal ratio in Delhi. And look at even in the NCR, which is parts of the NCR are not really in uh, completely urbanized. There are parts of rural. But even then, you have 31% of the roads having a BC ratio greater than 0.6. So the existing system exists. The, it's one thing is very clear. The existing road network is absolutely clogged and worse so during peak hours. So you, when you have a scenario like this, how do you, how do you plan? Is your conventional answer more roads, most, more uh, uh, flyovers? I don't think that was the answer. So that's what really got me thinking. Next. The NCR is a region which is a statutory, statutorily formed under the Act. So under the Act, you have a regional plan. But as I said, the NCR is the only area which is coming about as a region from an act. People tried it. Uh, there were visions of doing the Madras, uh, Chennai, Bangalore area as a regional area. It has not happened. Some other areas has not happened. There are large federal issues involved. The NCR area, of course, is, is by virtue of a NCR TV act. And as per the act, a regional plan has to be prepared every 10 years, which needs the approval of all the interstate 
uh, participating states. Now, the objective is dispersal of economic activity and also trying to deflect future in migrants into Delhi. Well, this is one of the official um, objectives of the regional plan. Uh, the regional plan, especially for the multimodal transport system, was uh, to develop metro and regional centers in NCR and areas around the NCR for balanced development and to provide regional transport <coughs> linkages with through a regional rapid transit system, so rail-based, greenfield, interstate, and as I had said, the largest interstate physical infrastructure project. Of course, provision of expressways, you would also have heard in the newspapers about the Eastern Expressway, Peripheral Expressway and the Western. And of course, development of infrastructure in the whole India. This is just what all the regional plan, the integrated transport plan had. It is a comprehensive plan which includes even logistic hubs, integrated freight complexes, etc. Et now if you look at the integrated transport plan, the expressways which were already proposed, which we took into account when we did the RRTS, were the eastern, the KMP, it's called the Western Peripheral Expressway, the Eastern Peripheral Ma'am, Express just Express two minutes more. Okay. Yes. And there were a large number of other projects, uh, other uh, uh, road <coughs> projects. Sure. 
as I said, these problems are arising because of our living in a federal policy. Ma'am, you'll have to start yeah, winding up. Yeah. Just these are the project project benefits. Next. The net economic value is 3.5 lakh crore. If we have analyzed this is as per 2010 uh, prices. Next. I just want to say one thing. I think the debate in the transport sector has to move away from mere economic analysis. It has to move to a public health debate. And if you look at the public health debate, the transport sector is the largest source of energy related GHG emissions. And by 2012, it is to be increased to 26%. And look at rail, the amount of GHG emissions, the range, depending upon the fuel quality in passengers. I think this whole debate has to move into a public health debate. And only if we move it into a public health and a climate change debate can the transport sector become more efficient than what it was and that what we see it every day. These are the impacts of of the RRTS, and I said, um, increased economic activity, balanced economic development, access to jobs, savings in travel and costs, reduced energy use, lowering of emissions, easing of road congestion, improved traffic safe, improved safety. But I think the most important thing is huge public health benefits, the direct, the indirect, and the huge public health be be benefits which are very rarely computed, extremely difficult to do, but can be done. We still haven't been able to do it for the RRTS. I wish we could.